Hi, I'm Mackenzie. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for the past five months, ever since I left the church in August of 2021, but I needed some time to process what was going on and articulate my feelings into words. I have been asked this question from so many friends and family, so I thought just putting it together in one video would be efficient. And I hope you listen to what I have to say because I think it's important. So let's get into it. Also, sorry to anyone who subscribed to this channel when I was doing crafts. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to watch this, <laughs> I promise. I was born and raised into the church. I am the oldest of six kids and I am the only member of my family who has left. Everyone else is active, believing members of the church. And I told myself several times throughout my life that no matter what happened, I would never leave the church. Never, ever, 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 ever. No matter what I was going through, questions I had, things that didn't make sense, I did what the church told me to do, which was doubt your doubt before you doubt your faith. So that's what I did. I relied on my testimony and my faith. I'm just gonna have to put a trigger warning here for um, essay. I'll put stamps in the video depending on what I'm talking about so you can kind of navigate it, but um, take care of yourself if that's something you don't want to hear about right now. The thing that hit me like a truck was when the article from the Associated Press came out. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will go ahead and link it below. I think most of you, if you're Mormon, are familiar with this. If you're not, it details the SA of a girl who was um, abused for years by her father and the church knew about it and did not report it to the authorities. I recommend reading that for sure if you haven't. When I read that, I knew right then and there, this is not Christ's church and I want nothing to do with it. And I knew it wasn't just a one-off because it happened to me. <sighs> when I was 15, I was essayed by an older priesthood member of our ward at the time and I did what any good Mormon girl does, and I went to my bishop. Um, we were encouraged at the time to take anything to the bishop because he was a respected leader of the ward. Even in the Strength of Youth pamphlet that I grew up with, it was said if you were abused to go to your bishop, and in the current one it says to go to your bishop, but in neither of those does it say to go to the police. I don't know if I can really efficiently describe how innocent I was at the time. I had never kissed a boy, never held hands with a boy, they terrified me. I was innocent in every sense of the word. So when the abuse happened, I was beside myself. I didn't know what to do. So I went to my bishop for counsel, and I remember him saying the words, I'm glad you came to me. And I also remember him saying, it could have been worse. The fact that it was a crime was never brought up. I was basically just told to use the atonement and to pray, just pray the PTSD away. So since everything was being handled internally by the church, I was never given tools or resources to deal with my trauma other than Jesus. So I did that. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and all that happened was I became extremely depressed. Um, I almost didn't graduate high school because I just did not care anymore about what happened to me. The next time I told a bishop about the abuse was four years later when I was 19 years old. And to his credit, he did recommend LDS Family Services, which is owned by the church, and they offer counseling services. I was grateful because it was paid by the church, and so I went to individual counseling as well as group counseling for um, those my age who had also been abused. So it wasn't nothing, but it also wasn't like full-on therapy. Mormon doctrine was just kind of jammed into my skull. Um, I didn't really learn any cognitive behavioral therapy tools, any healthy coping mechanisms. I mean, I was just glad I had someone to talk to about it, but at the same time, the atonement was the number one thing they told me to use. So it was on me to forgive. It was on me, and if I still wasn't feeling good, it's because I hadn't forgiven fully, and that's my fault. So if you're keeping count now, that is three church leaders that did not contact authorities who knew about the abuse. When I wanted to serve a mission at 23, I had to talk to yet another bishop to make sure I was worthy to serve a mission, which looking back at it, I'm not sure why I had to tell him about my past abuse because it's not like I did anything wrong, but there was something in there that basically said you had to like confess everything and be very open and honest with like every bad thing you ever did and every bad thing that ever happened to you. I might be making that up, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. So if you could confirm that, please let me know. 
All I knew was I had to tell my bishop what happened again. I was once again sent to LDS Family Services to talk to a counselor for an hour who I had never met before to determine if I was suitable mentally for a mission. I received notice that I was not recommended for a proselyting mission, which on one hand, fair enough. Um, on the other hand, I knew people with my similar mental health issues that were serving missions and I was very confused why I was denied and those others were not. If I was a conspiracy theorist, I'd say it could be possible that it had something to do with the fact that I had a very negative experience with the church and they didn't want that story being told to future potential members of the church. I don't know. It wasn't until I was 24 when I went to a school counselor at my university. When I told her about my PTSD and my past abuse, she looked me in the eyes and she said, you know I have to report this, right? I, what are you talking about? I was stunned. I didn't know that was an option because the four past adult men who were priesthood leaders of the church that I had spoken to about this had not reported it to the police. And this woman, who was a therapist for the university I worked at, said that she was legally obligated to report such abuse. So it turns out therapists are held to a higher standard than leaders of the church. So I did personally speak with an investigator who I did believe took my case seriously. And I don't want to get into detail about what happened after that, other than it should have happened a lot sooner. The fact that I talked to a detective nine years after the fact is disturbing and disappointing. So when I read the AP article, knowing that something similar happened to me, one thing I didn't know was that there is a hotline that has been confirmed to exist by the church that church leaders can call when serious sins have been confessed to them that might require legal action. And they call this hotline, which are answered by the church's lawyers, and they are told whether or not to report it. The hotline is not for victims. It is to protect abusers within the church. Clergy penitent privilege laws should not exist. All crimes should be reported. It is bizarre that I have to say that out loud. I thought the church's motto was choose the right, let the consequences follow. Not choose the right unless it makes us look bad or gets us in trouble, then do whatever you have to do to protect yourself. So the idea that the bishops I had previously spoken to had called a hotline without my knowledge and sought out legal advice makes me want to throw up. I thought I could trust them and now I realize they were not telling me the whole truth and were keeping me quiet to protect the church and I am no longer going to protect them. If Christ's true church were on this earth, that hotline would not exist. Christ did not care about the law. He cared about doing the right thing. It finally all clicked for me. And since then I have been deconstructing on TikTok and I have found a group of ex-Mormons on there that are the most kind, understanding, welcoming community. Ex-Mormons are nothing like the church teaches. Everyone has a story and everyone leaves for different reasons. It is strongly, strongly discouraged in Mormonism to seek resources outside the church. However, most anti-Mormon doctrine is the church's own words, their own website, the prophet's words, apostles' words. Anything that you can say to me as a Mormon, I was saying. There's nothing you can throw at me that I haven't already thought about or said out of my own mouth. Like, I defended the church so hard for no reason <laughs> other than I grew up in it and it was comfortable to me and I was scared to leave. And leaving is not easy. There is a lot of social pressure and family pressure to stay in the church. I can try and explain myself, but no reason is good enough for some people to leave the church. I'm simply letting you know my reasons and I feel I have been lied to and manipulated for the past 31 years of my life. I do not hate members of the church. My beef is not with members, it is with the church itself. It's with the church leaders, those who profess to talk to God and speak for God. I tried. I tried to stay in the church. I did everything that the church is telling me to do. You don't have to agree with why, 
But if you can at least understand where I'm coming from, that's all that I ask. There's so much more I could get into and that I want to get into, so follow me on TikTok, follow me on YouTube, and I would be happy to make more videos for you guys. Thank you for sticking around this long if you have, and thank you for listening. Bye!